I think some of the important amendments uh, to the finance bill moved by uh, Mr. Pranam Mukherjee uh, uh, yesterday, I think are very positive for the market. Uh, his uh, uh, proposal to defer uh, car provisions by one year to F5, 13, 14 is sentimentally positive for the markets uh, because it will allow both taxpayers and tax administration officials enough time to address all the issues relating to GAR. I think uh, the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Finance has made uh, some far-reaching recommendations and the Finance Minister has accepted some of these. I think the key three recommendations uh, of importance uh, we believe are that removing the onus uh, of proof entirely from taxpayer to the revenue department. Uh, secondly, the introduction of an independent member in the GAR approving panel will in, to ensure objectivity and transparency. And lastly, allowing any taxpayer to approach the authority for advance ruling before undertaking any arrangement to check whether it is permissible under GAR. Uh, we, these three measures, we believe, will allay investor concerns about being subjected to witch hunt by tax officials. Uh, the other issue is to provide greater clarity and certainty in the matters relating to GAR. A committee has been constituted and the committee will be suggesting certain safeguards uh, which will ensure that the GAR provisions are not applied indiscriminately by the revenue department. The, uh, the uh, recommendations of the committee will be out by 31st of uh, the current of, of May 2012. Uh, there were also concerns whether the retrospective amendments which are proposed in GAR, whether they will override the double taxation avoidance uh, treaties that India has signed with nearly 82 odd countries. Here again the government has been very positive and they have said that the provisions of GTAA will override any retrospective amendments in uh, proposed uh, 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 in car. So hence, I think the concerns on investments being routed through Mauritius route being questioned uh, for the time being are allayed. And lastly on the car issue, the uh, 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 there was a concern that uh, some of the cases as far back as 1962 will be opened up. But here again, the FM has categorically stated that a circular will be put out uh, and only those cases which whose assessment is not yet complete will be opened up. For those cases where assessment is complete, cases will not be opened up. Hence, I think you know, we are looking at cases possibly over the last six to seven years, which potentially sort of you know, could come under the purview of car. So in addition to these far-reaching measures on GAR, there are certain other measures that uh, 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 were announced by the Finance Ministry yesterday which are of import from a market perspective. Uh, in case of unlisted securities, the long-term capital gains tax paid by FIIs was at 10%. Whereas for all the other non-resident investors including the private equity funds, it was at 20%. This anomaly has been addressed and now all non-resident investors including PE funds will pay only 10% long term capital gains tax on unlisted securities. The finance minister had announced in the budget that long term low cost foreign funds can be accessed by infrastructure companies uh, and only a 5% withholding tax will have to be uh, kept aside by uh, 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 sorry, uh, by them. Now this provision has now been extended to companies from all sectors. Now this will allow companies from all sectors to avail of low cost long term foreign borrowings as well as long term infra long term bonds. Uh, in case of foreign banks, many of them have structured uh, their uh, sort of the, the structure that they follow is not a subsidiary structure but most of their uh, uh, their Indian operations are uh, branches of their foreign uh, parents. Now here, uh, 
the RBI would like to pop, uh, would like to push the subsidy model rather than the branch model, and hence the government has offered the banks tax neutrality. Uh, this will help the Indian subsidiary to ring fence Indian capital and operations from any external shocks. Uh, now, in so far as uh, 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 sale of immovable assets is concerned, the budget had proposed a levy of one percent of tax deducted uh, tax deducted by seller as TDS on sale of all immovable property except agricultural land. This has been withdrawn, citing heavy compliance burden. Uh, now, in an effort to move towards GST. The FM had proposed a 1% excise duty on unbranded uh, precious metal jewellery. Now, after howls of protest and fierce lobbying, the FM has withdrawn this. To curb unaccounted flow of money into bullion and jewellery trade, the FM had proposed that a seller would deduct 1% tax at source from a buyer uh, for purchase of any jewellery about rupees 2 lakh. Again, this was met with loud protests and the FM has uh, acceded to uh, the, the requests and uh, basically he has amended this proposal wherein now any cash purchase of jewellery above 5 lakh will attract this provision of 1% tax uh, at, at source deduction. But in case of bullion, I think uh, the threshold limit remains at rupees 2 lakh. Uh, and lastly, there are certain amendment, amendments that are proposed in customs and excise laws, which had made, uh, 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 where it was proposed that if certain offences were committed, they would be cognizable and non bailable The FM has now said that all offences will be bailable and only those offences which exceed rupees 50 lakhs will be cognizable. Uh, now, in the current environment uh, in which uh, negative news flow uh, is dominating the headlines both globally as well as locally, uh, the FM has provided a much needed relief for the markets. Importantly, it also keeps the hope alive that the government is responsive to investor concerns and the other stalled reforms like increasing fuel prices, fertilizer prices and opening up of sectors like aviation, multi-brand retail and the pending bills on banking, insurance and pension. Will, there is a possibility or it is rekindles hope that some of these reforms will go through during the budget session and maybe I think uh, uh, the increase in fuel and fertilizer prices after 23rd of May post the budget session. So I think uh, uh, this is a welcome measure and will provide uh, a boost to the markets which are currently trading at attractive valuations of 12.5 times FY1230 earnings and around 11 times FY14 earnings. We are still expecting of 18% growth in EPS for Nifty for FY13 and around 12% for FY14 which is a discount to the last 10 years average. Uh, I think the market if it shows weakness one should be buying it on declines for a good uh, uh, sort of you know bounce back rally from the current levels in the short to medium term. Thank you.